Featuring Cold Fusion TV. Hi, welcome to another Cold Fusion video. It's becoming clear, like in all sectors of technology, that the field of robotics is starting to accelerate in its maturity in the past five years or so. Although we're still at the very early stages of robots that behave realistically, there's a few interesting projects that are starting to emerge. In this video, we'll take a look at some of those. The last one may shock you. This video will have a sequel where we talk about the cutting edge of robotic dexterity, versatility and innovation. However, in this first episode, we'll just take a look at the most advanced robots in terms of realism. Geminoid F is a humanoid robot built in 2010 by the Japanese firm Kokoro and Osaka University's roboticist Hishoshi Hishiguru. Its original unit price was 110,000 US dollars and the android was placed in department stores and hospitals and displayed in science museums and other venues. In 2015, Geminoid F became the first robot to co-star in a movie, the Japanese film Sayonara. How was it? What? The town. It seems like there are less and less people. Geminoid DK, made in 2011, was a second robot made by the same Japanese collaboration and was designed to look like an associate professor from Denmark. And I am the Geminoid DK, but most people just call me the DK. Both of the Geminoid robots are manually operated, so they're more of a bonus mention than actual robots on the list. This next robot is autonomous and can have bounded conversation on its own. Nadine is a social humanoid created by the Nanyang Technological University in Singapore. She is able to memorize conversations that you had together and use them in context for the next time you talk to her. Hello, Nadine. Hi, it's delightful to see you. Can you introduce yourself? My name is Nadine. I'm a social companion. You look beautiful today. Thanks, you look attractive too. How do you feel today? Always cheer when I see you. Why do you feel that, that, that way? Because you are so nice to me. Nadine and other social robots use something called the Perception Decision Action Architecture. Nadine sees or senses something, thinks about what to do, and then performs an action. This might sound familiar because this is basically how we go about interacting with the world. In Nadine, the perception layer is interestingly made up of a second generation Microsoft Connect coupled with a microphone. This makes up her sight and hearing. Her software interprets the vision from the Microsoft Connect and enables her to have facial recognition and gesture recognition. The software also mimics mood and has conversational memory. Basically, it's like Siri, Alexa or Google Now, but with more personality. Finally, the action layer consists of a dedicated robot controller which includes emotional expressions, lip synchronization and gaze generation. The result is a robot that seems socially intelligent, meaning that it can provide a friendly greeting, make eye contact during dialogue, and remembers conversations that you've had, including facts about you. Applications include reading stories to kids, showing images, putting on Skype sessions, and sending emails. The Android can play the role of a receptionist in an office, or generally aid in a variety of situations, especially for the elderly and disabled. We can't really talk about robotic realism without Hanson Robotics' Sophia that caused so much fuss last year. The robot, who was modelled after Audrey Hepburn, made waves last year when she became the first robot to be a citizen of a country, Saudi Arabia, in October of 2017. While still fairly rudimentary in her ability to think and reason, Sophia is a bit different because she was built in partnership with Google, who produced the SingularityNet program that powers her speech and comprehension. SingularityNet aims to improve Sophia's ability to converse by analysing previous conversations and using what she's learned for future conversation. Despite this, most of her responses have been scripted or are generated by a decision tree. A decision tree is literally the same method that chatbots use. So if X event happens, then do action Y. So Sophia is basically a chatbot with a face. It gives the illusion of intelligence but is really closer to a party trick than anything meaningful. 
So we are now going to interview Sophia. Obviously, these are programmed answers that she's come up with, but it'd be fascinating to see how she actually interacts with us. What's the best thing about the UK compared to America, Sophia? I love your posh English accent. <laughs> it really has a nice ring. <laughs> but I have to ask now. I'll ask it. Are you single? I'm technically just a little more than a year old. A bit young to worry about romance. Quite right. <laughs> Look at the smile! <laughs> With oh a little my god, this is freaking me out. You are a little freak, aren't you? This is great. Uh, but what's... you see, I feel weird just being rude to her. Well, let me carry on. I feel weird about that. She's not happy. Look. No! She's giving, you the, she's giving you the right death. All right, easy, Tiger. So to be clear, this sure isn't AGI or even AI such as deep learning. Sophia, however, can talk about simpler, predefined topics, such as the weather, by using SingularityNet, which is set to improve over time. Built in 2015, the humanoid robot was developed by Hanson Robotics of Hong Kong and is capable of 62 facial expressions. The cameras within her eyes enabled her to see and interpret via computer vision, and in early 2018, Sophia had gained the ability to walk. Sophia did impress a lot of people, but in terms of realism, she seems a full decade away from our next robot. The number one spot in terms of realism comes from an unexpected place. Disney. It's the Avatar Shaman robot at Disney World and it's a modern technological marvel. Here's how the face looks uncovered. Just take a look at the intricacies of those mouth actuators. Here's how the robot looks with its face on. I look forward to seeing you on Pandora. Well, not the game. Was that okay? And no, this is not CGI. And here it is in context and in action. I think this is remarkable and I didn't actually think that we were at this point yet. Just look closely at her movements. Notably, she has acceleration and deceleration all throughout the body and even the face. The motion eases in and eases out instead of jerking and just suddenly stopping like other robots. Although obviously not human form, the character is the closest to lifelike that I've seen. The Shaman robot was developed by Walt Disney's Imagineering team, so it makes sense for such fluid motion to exist. Just thinking about it, animation itself has a lot to do with the accurate portrayal of motion for the created characters. As you've seen in my How Big Is Disney video, no other company has been at the cutting edge of animation throughout history, so such a robot makes sense. Disney's track record with animatronics has been stellar. And you have planted the seeds of despotism around your own door. But these robots were built by the firm Garner Holt, who also gave us this guy in late 2017. This character is said to be the most expressive face ever made with 42 independent actuators and 7 in the neck alone, giving it almost human-like ability of expression. Strangely, Garner Holt said that some of the first future applications outside of entertainment are going to be in the military and medical industry for training. But anyway, back to the Shaman. Unlike pretty much all the other robots, there's no air compressors or oil hydraulics moving any of the parts. It's fully electric and built in-house by Disney. Walt Disney Imagineering executive producer Lisa Girolami states the ethos of their work. Quote, We don't stop until the technology can't be seen. It should be invisible. End quote. It is really like that saying. When technology is good enough, it gets out of the way so much that you can't even notice it. The end result of this robot sparked my imagination when I saw it for the first time. Just think. It's now not hard to envision a world in which this kind of fine-tuned dexterity would be used in social robots that can converse in a much more advanced method than both Sophia and Nadine. With advances in deep learning and machine learning, the training of algorithms could be done on vast libraries of language and conversational interactions between humans from, say, TV shows and movies. This data could be stored in the cloud or possibly in a blockchain of some kind. If a sufficiently smart algorithm could be built and could figure out how humans communicate given all of this data, a convincing Android robot could come along a little bit faster than we think. On another thought, 
Perhaps even the field of bionics for amputees may benefit from some of the lessons learnt in the pursuit of ultra-realistic robots. So, what do you guys think? Which robot was your favourite? What do you see for the future in terms of robotics? Let me know in the comment section below. Anyway, this has been Dagogo, you've been watching Cold Fusion. If you've just stumbled across this channel, feel free to subscribe. Oh yeah, and if you want to know more about Disney and its history, I'll leave my video, How Big Is Disney, in the description below. Cheers guys, have a good one.